Hello, everyone. We are Team Sadmi. We have Mark Richardson, Adi Shresh, Alex Hawker, David Cruz, and Eric Liu as our team members. Our project is to design a cumin production plant using propylene and benzene feed. Recently, Netline Chemical has developed a new catalyst for producing cumin, and we will be implementing this new catalyst into our production process and evaluate the feasibility of building the plant based on different economic factors. Our cumin plant has the capacity of 400 million pounds per year, and it's located at U.S. Gulf Coast, indicated here in the U.S. map. Now let's get into some chemistry of this cumin production process. We have two major reactions happening at two separate reactors, alkylation reaction and transalkylation reaction. For alkylation reaction, we have propylene and benzene reacting with each other to form our cumin product. Once cumin is formed, it will be very likely to further react with propylene to form diisopropyl benzene, also known as DIPB. That's why we have this transalkylation reaction to convert DIPB back into two equivalent moles of our cumin product. Since there are impurities in the benzene and propylene feed stream, byproducts are expected during the process. These byproducts include, but not limited to, cyclohexane, hydrogen, ethylbenzene, and butylbenzene, and heavies. These byproducts will be removed through distillation columns to eventually achieve a cumin product purity of 99.9%. .9%. This presentation focuses on the design, economics, and feasibility of cumin production. Three main topics will be covered. Process flow and product specification, economics, and recommendations. The process was broken down into four main phases based on relative location inside of the plant. Phase one included benzene purification and alkylation reaction. Phase two included fuel removal, benzene recycle, and transalkylation reaction. Phase three included cumin separation, DIPB recycle, and cumin purification. Finally, phase four includes waste removal. A block flow diagram was drafted based on research found from cumin processes currently in industry. Processes that were researched include ExxonMobil's Badger Cumin process, UOP QMAX process, and Richard Turton's process found in the Syntheses of Chemical Processes textbook. So here you can see the depiction of our block flow diagram. At the beginning here is phase one, the middle is phase two, and near the end is phase three. Now phase four is not depicted in this diagram, but the phases will be explored in depth on the preceding slides. Phase one of our process involves the purification of benzene. 95% benzene goes through two distillation columns, which separate out toluene. Toluene is necessary to be separated out from benzene due to a feed concentration limit of 1,000 parts per million toluene for the alkylation reactor. The purified benzene mixes with recycled benzene, as well as fresh 92% propylene to react inside of the alkylation reactor and produce cumin plus side products. Following the alkylation reaction, we hit phase two of the process. Here, cumin and side products enter a fuel remover, which removes light components like propane, ethylene, and hydrogen. Unreacted benzene can then be separated, recycled, combined with DIPB, and sent through a transalkylation reactor to produce even more cumin and heavy products. Additional benzene from the benzene recycler is sent back to the alkylation reactor in phase one to reduce the amount of feed benzene needed to be purchased. Cumin and heavy products then reach phase three of our process. This is where the final purification of cumin happens. Ethyl benzene and cumin are separated out from heavier components in the cumin separator. They're then sent to a final distillation column 
that separates the pure cumin from ethyl benzene. Heavy components are sent to a DIPV recycler, which removes heavies like oterphenyl and n naphthalene. BIPB is recycled here and sent back to the transalkylation reactor. Having covered an overview of the process, I will be discussing the different specifications that need to be met by our design. There are two different kinds of specifications, hard and soft. Hard specifications, which I will be covering initially, are the ones that need to be met by our design for it to even be feasible. First, we have specifications provided for our cumium product. They're initially based around the production capacity being within what is provided for us and also focused around the purity of the cumium product. The product, the product needs to have a cumium purity above 99.9% along with different impurities staying below a certain threshold. As can be seen in the green column provided, all of the specs are being met by our current design. Next, hard specifications were also present for our alkylation reactor. These were focused around the concentration of different products entering our feed of the reactor, and we are staying below those levels as can be seen in the green column. At the same time, we also picked a benzene to propylene feed ratio, and we stayed within those parameters as well. Other minor specifications were also provided for the phase, phases entering the reactor along with the max temperature that is allowed for the reactor to be operating at, and we are well within those bounds for the temperature, and all the phases within the reactor are present in a liquid phase, which is why a higher pressure was chosen when operating it. Similar to the alkylation reactor, there were also specifications present for our transalkylation reactor. These were also based around the concentration of the feeds entering into our reactor, and we are staying below those concentrations as can be, as can be seen in the green column. An actual hard spec for the benzene to DIPB ratio was provided as being six, and we actually are meeting that spec spot on. Finally, I'll be covering the soft specifications provided for our process design. Soft specifications are ones which should be met, but if they aren't, justification can be provided for why they aren't met, as is the case with our process design. As can be seen in the table shown, all soft specs were not met perfectly, but our values are quite close to what is required. Attempts to meet these specifications and bring values closer to what is required were sought out, but this either required immense increases in costs or resulted in certain hard specifications not being met. Total contracting costs of the IBL and OBL amount to an estimated 55586000 The inside battery limit accounts for 76% of the cost. Pumps, heat exchangers, towers, and drums were accounted for in the total contracting cost. Phase 1 has the highest cost due to the three alkylation reactors, contributing $8.1 million to the estimate. In comparison, the transalkylation reactor in Phase 2 costs $732,000. Phase 3 is heavy on the separation, running with three distillation columns performing at high temperatures. Phase 4 consists mainly of pumps, so it has the lowest cost. The catalyst region system costs slightly more than Phase 4 because it has two large heat exchangers. The outer battery limit accounts for the other 24% of the total contracting cost and includes site development and other important operational capita. Final capital cost estimates are significantly higher than the total contracted cost. Accounting for additional factors like team cost and packing the startup reactor with catalysts, this brings up the total contractor cost to a current point estimate of $70.8 million. The 9% escalation factor spread out over the course of three years and the 20% project contingency factor get the final capital estimate of $92,347,000. Raw material costs account for 86% of the total cash cost, with fresh benzene contributing the most in this section. The total utilities, fixed cost, and administrative expenses combined account for the remaining 14%, totaling in an operational cost of 38.28 cents per pound of cumin. The operational cost is less than the selling price of cumin, that is 42 cents per pound, thus leaving room for profits. The assumptions of 12% discount rate, 21% income tax rate, 10% of revenues for the working capita, 
2.8% for escalation and 4% of sales for the administrative expenses were made for the projected 15-year life cycle of the project, with three years needed beforehand to build the plant. It is important to note the model used for depreciation was modified accelerated cost recovery system, and the plant did not reach full capacity until the third year, operating at 45% and 80% for the first two years. The total economic evaluation reveals a cumulative cash flow of $176 million and a net present worth of $29 million at the end of the project life. Selling cumin at a market price of $0.42 cents per pound has an after-tax rate of return of 19.5%. The plant will take a little over six years to have a return on capita. At this time, the analysis shows the cumin plant is worth building because its after-tax rate of return is higher than the minimum 15%. Just be aware the return occurs after the preferred four years. An increase in raw material prices drastically affect the profitability of the plant. The price of the benzene and propylene feed streams were increased until an ATROR of 15% was achieved. Once the ATROR of 15% was achieved, the cumulative plant net worth was compared to that of the base case. It was found that when increasing the price of raw materials, the cumulative plant net worth decreased by $18.9 million at the end of the plant's operation. Also, the increased material prices take the plant four extra years to be paid off. The plant is not recommended to be made if the prices of raw materials are expected to increase because of the decrease in the net worth as well as the extra time required to pay off the plant. An increase in natural gas prices has little effect on the profitability of the plant. For this sensitivity analysis, the price of natural gas was increased until the ATROR equaled 15%. Increasing the natural gas price will in turn increase the price of other utilities in the plant. This caused very little change in the plant's economics. The cumulative plant net worth only decreased by $0.3 million and the plant was paid off at the same time as the base case. A reason for the small changes in the economics of the plant is that the fuel credit received from the combustion of the waste streams is directly based on the price of natural gas. So when the price of natural gas increases, the fuel credit's value also increases. The plant is recommended to be built if the natural gas prices are expected to increase due to the small effect it has to the overall plant economics. The cumene plant is more profitable with a two-year build time. This sensitivity analysis compares the build time of three years in the base case to a two-year build period. The ATROR of the base case is 19.5% and it increases to 22.5% for this two-year build period. Also with the shorter build period, the cumulative plant net worth increases by $10.8 million. Additionally, the plant is paid off one year sooner than the base case. Based on these values, the plant is recommended to be built if construction can take two years. A caveat to this analysis is that it does not account for any increases in construction costs for a shortening the build period. If the plant is wanted to be built within two years, additional economic analysis would have to be done in order to accurately predict the new construction costs of the plant. The plant is slightly more profitable with a two-year startup period. This sensitivity analysis involves changing the time required for the plant to reach full capacity. In the base case, it takes three years to achieve 100% capacity, and in this analysis, full capacity is achieved in two years. This change increases the ATROR from 19.5% of the base case to 20.2%. Also, the cumulative plant net worth is increased by $2.2 million, and the plant is paid off one year sooner than the base case. The net payback is now 40.7 cents per pound cumene. The reason for an increase in the ATROR and the plant net worth is that the cumene plant has an extra year at full capacity. The plant is recommended to be built if the startup is able to take two years. A small change in the cumene prices drastically affects the profitability of the plant. The price that cumene is sold for was decreased until an ATROR of 15% was achieved. 
The cumene price is normally 42 cents per pound and it was decreased to 40.9 cents per pound. This decrease in the price drastically decreased the cumulative plant net worth by $18.8 million and it takes an additional two years to pay off the plant. This small change in the price has such a large impact on the total economics of the plant due to the plant capacity being 400 million pounds of cumene per year. The plant is not recommended to be built if the cumene market is expected to decrease. An example of this decrease would be that another company begins to sell cumene as well and the price drops due to the increase of supply. In conclusion, Team SADME recommends building the cumene production plant in Nitlion Chemicals Gulf Coast facility. This is because we have an ATROR of 19.5% above the minimum 15% and a cumulative net present worth of $29 million. One caveat to be wary of is the longer payback period of six years. This increases the risk of unforeseen circumstances like rises in raw material costs resulting in the capital investment not being returned. In spite of this, the long-term benefits outweigh the perceived risks. Are there any questions? All right, it looks like there's no more questions. Thank you and have a good day.